Hello and good morning everyone. I just brushed my teeth for approximately 10 minutes because I have a dentist appointment today. I really much dread going through the dentist. I hate it, even though I now have like a really nice dentist, she takes such good care. But I feel like because of my eating disorder, my teeth are so bad and I always get comments saying like, no, it's not that bad. And that is very kind and nice of you. But honestly, not from like an aesthetic kind of view. Just medically, I have very bad teeth. There is so much to do with my teeth because apparently the combination of anorexia and bulimia is the most deadly for the teeth because with the bulimia and constantly throwing up, obviously all of like the acid from your stomach gets constantly flooded through your teeth. And then with the anorexia, you're usually malnourished, at least, at least I was, and so your teeth don't have the strength to sustain that. And then if you're like me and you like also have a big fear of going to the dentist and so you let it like kind of go for so many years, it's just ending bad. There is a lot more that goes into going to the dentist and like me trying to take better care of myself. So I feel like we should talk a little more about that later. However, now I really need to get going. I put on a cute outfit. I don't know if anyone else is like that, but when I have to do something, I kind of dread. I try to dress up for it. It just makes me feel better, helps me get through it. This is today's tea. We're back with the Christmas Center mug. Oh, my bangs were kind of messed up. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Um, today's tea is fennel, anise, and caraway. If I'm being honest, I have like a love-hate relationship with this kind of tea. I drank so much of it during like starting nursing because apparently this is really good to start lactation. But then I had so much oversupply, so I kind of stopped. I like it. Like the smell is so familiar. It's a good tea, it's very herby, but I feel like I have drank so many cups of this this year that I don't really like love this anymore. This is just not as exciting as some of the other teas were. So yeah, I'm gonna hop in the car, go to the dentist, and I will take you along. And I just feel like today is a good day to let you know a little more about what was going on in my life and how I overcame it. follow me on Instagram you know this view because this is our parking spot welcome welcome <laughs> and I'm just like currently filming out of my trunk but yeah I'm wearing my glasses from my grandma they're just the coolest someone commented they are a little big for my face I agree but I love that I feel like it's an intentional thing uh, a fur coat this is a hippie shake dress some colored tights and then these knitted boots that I wore yesterday and I just really like them because they are really tight and I do like the look of that yeah, let's get going. I'm so nervous, honestly. I'm just trying to keep my mind occupied with something else, but I am nervous, honestly. Okay, so I know it's a lot less cool with these glasses, but I need them to drive a car. Yeah, I feel like at this point, I wanna put a trigger warning on the video. If you are sensitive to dentist things, and especially if you are triggered or sensitive to all things relating eating disorders, and also maybe depression, sexual abuse, things like that, if that's triggering to you, maybe you don't want to watch the video. I'm just going to link something here for you. You can watch that. It's a video that's a lot more fun. I don't know what I'm going to link, but something that's fun. Um, yeah, and I hope you have a beautiful day. I will catch you tomorrow. See you guys. Um, I hope you just, I just don't want you to get hurt by this video. But yeah, where do I even start? I... Pretty much ever since I knew I had a dentist appointment coming up during the vlogmas time, I was like, do I want to talk about this? And I think I've come to terms that I want to talk about it. I just don't know how deep I'm going to go because there are things that I have... I mean, all of this I've never really discussed like publicly or on here, but there are some things that I haven't even like discussed with a lot of people that are close to me. It's hard for me to talk about these things, honestly. But I think it's important because when I was deep down in my eating disorder, I used to watch these videos of people who recovered and it was like the most inspiring thing ever. And especially with like someone who has a baby now, because I was told that I would never have a baby and it was heartbreaking. And I feel like it is something that helped me recover just knowing that. But yeah, I, I, yeah. This video is gonna be so rambly and just like a lot of stuttering because I truly, I don't know what to say.
maybe we'll just start with the dentist stuff and then get into like the real thickness of all of like what was going down in my life afterwards like on a little walk later i want to take teddy on a little walk probably in his carry-on maybe that's going to be nice i just got done this part of my face is still you can see i can't really move it because of like the shot but i feel a lot better <laughs> it's still bleeding a little but i think i'm gonna be okay such a beautiful house where the dentist is in i look like i have like a botched lip job or something <laughs> this side it's completely like i can't really feel anything here but yeah all done it was good it was okay it's always okay i just need to remind myself it's going to be fine and the good news are two more and they can do it in one appointment and then i'm done all my teeth are fixed i cannot believe it honestly ah i'm done back in the car let's go home and catch up with teddy Ward. okay so i am back home now i am still drinking the tea that i started with this morning it's so weird to drink with like this part of my face being numb. <sighs> yeah, I was originally planning on just going outside with the baby now, but he's asleep. So what can I do? He's like the cutest little guy sleeping downstairs. <sighs> so I figured I would just sit down up here, start telling you this story, and then maybe later I'm gonna go out and then tell you the rest. Oh, the sun is coming in, it's so beautiful today. I'm so much in my feels today. It's insane. I feel like this has been coming since yesterday, but today it's like even more. So yeah, let me take you through this story. There are a few things going into this. Um, I don't really know how I'm going to start if I'm being honest. One thing that I only learned when I was an impatient eventually is that most eating disorders come from trauma. I think 90% of the people that have an eating disorder are women, something like this, and like most of them have it from trauma because apparently when you lose control, an eating disorder is something a lot of people hold on to. And for me, it was exactly that. When I was 17, almost about to graduate. Sometimes this is why I have a hard time during fall because it has already passed, but like during fall, this is always very present. It's been seven years, which is absolutely insane. Um, I don't wanna go into detail here because this is like the part that I don't ever really talk about. Let's just put it with one incident that was a sexual abuse situation without like going into more detailing um but yeah that happened and afterwards i tried my best to just keep it together i basically told no one there were several reasons for that um one being an older boyfriend i had at the time i kind of look back on that really critically because i was 17 he was like 22 at that time I didn't thought that there was anything wrong, but like looking back I think it's kind of weird. <sighs> um, yeah, and like part of that was that I kind of opened up to him and he was like, this is a cheating kind of situation. I was like, it's not, but so I broke up with him, but I didn't really tell anyone. And I think I was holding on for dear life, um, just like keeping it going every day, going to school, finishing school. This was like right when I graduated, I had all of my final exams and everything. And there were two things that I noticed. Number one, I had a big sleeping problem. I had a sleeping issue to the point where like I couldn't sleep for several days. It was absolutely insane. Um, and when I fell asleep, every night I dreamt about what happened. Every single night. And I dreamt that for years. This is gonna go on until like two years ago or like something like that. But yeah. Um, and the other thing, I don't really want to go into like that story because that's like a full story of depression. I think it's very intertwined with the other story, but I... 
think I have to start like the other way. I'm, I'm sorry. Sometimes people ask me if I can do one of these like paint my life kind of videos or like tell you about my life and I would love to but there is this time in my life from like 17 to 22, 23 that I have such a weird relationship with. <laughs> that was so scary. I'm gonna go get downstairs get Teddy Boy and then maybe we'll just continue talking outside. Unfortunately, the sun has already kind of set, but I just had the idea that I would come out here and try to tell the story if I want to make breaks. I'm just going to do that. I'm just going to keep on walking. And um, yeah, I don't even know where I ended. I just remember that I was scared. That's like a part of my PTSD. I'm scared so easily. Yeah, um, basically I tried to keep it together. <sighs> but like food? quickly became an issue and I feel like I was able to hold it together until 2020 and by holding it together I mean that like when I was by myself I had a hard time eating and um, yeah I, it was just all really hard for me because I also like after what happened had like a big crisis with what I looked like I looked like my hair and did a bunch of things because I didn't want to look like that person anymore it was like a whole story first I cut off my hair then I dyed it um yeah but I feel like until 2020 I kept it together kind of okay because I was working I was working in the movie industry at that time I loved it I feel like that whole movie scene business kind of story and why I quit I need to make that a separate video because I feel like in the last video that I talked about it it came up a little wrong um yeah I'm glad that I quit but it was my dream for quite a long time basically ever since I remembered I wanted to be in the movie industry and it was really good for me at that time because it just like occupied me and also <laughs> now here's Teddy boy hi did you cheer me up I feel like he knows when I feel when I'm like a little down. Oh, he's the cutest. Um, yeah, but I was able to keep it together because when you're on working like on a movie set, they will have catering and so they just make sure that you eat. But then 2020 came around and the pandemic hit. I was in New York when the pandemic hit, and this is when like things really took a turn. And then I came back, and it all just got worse and worse. Um, it just started with me skipping one meal, skipping two meals, skipping a day, skipping two days, skipping three days, only drinking. Uh, I used to drink sparkling water to keep me full, which is absolutely insane. But it got to a point where I didn't feel anything anymore and I just physically also wasn't hungry anymore. And that is when things kind of took a turn for the worse. So yeah, um, 2020 thanks to the term because of COVID and quarantine. <laughs> because I feel like this was a time where when I had to be, I wouldn't eat all day. During that time I wouldn't eat all day. And then when I had, because I had friends over or was still like living with roommates, I would start to throw up that food afterwards. Um, I just realized that later, while I was impatient, through therapy and everything, um, that basically my loss of control kind of projected onto that. At the same time, I was dealing with depression, PTSD, a um, bunch of anxiety. Yeah, still not sleeping very well. Um, that was that time. And I think this is a very significant time in my life because it's also when I started joining like social media. Like I was, I had a Instagram account before but 2020 was truly the time where I started doing a lot on social media and just being a lot more active I feel like I need to come a little closer otherwise this is very quiet <sighs> yeah I remember starting social media in like summer I think like my first YouTube video was uploaded in fall of that year 
And looking back at that footage, I was very thin. And I just want to say that the way that your body looks doesn't have to do anything with an eating disorder. The way that my body looked back then might be a healthy weight for someone else. For me, it wasn't. I'm not going to discuss numbers here because I know how triggering that can be. But yeah, for me, I was like holding on to the last straw. I, at that point, hadn't had my period in like a year. I lost so much hair. I was constantly cold. My knees and like hands, everything was like turning blue all the time. I couldn't sleep. I was just not doing well. And there are pictures from that time where I looked really happy, and like smiley for the camera. But I remember how my only wish back then was to just stop this cycle of not eating, throwing up, always feeling so lost. I remember feeling so lost. And I think it was also because I kind of decided that I didn't want it to be in the movie industry anymore. But this was like all I've ever known and all I've ever wanted. And so this was kind of hard for me. And then at the end of that year, it was pretty much like three years ago now start of December I, I I had come home that fall because I during that fall one day I started waking up and I was working at a cafe at the time because like the movie industry had shut down at that point and I woke up and I was crying and I couldn't stop crying and so I did something that was like it took absolutely everything in me and I called my mom my mom and I at the time weren't doing the best we like definitely had some themes some struggles that we weren't really talking about I moved out and we kind of didn't talk for quite a while and I called her and um, she was like you have to come home and I'm so glad that I did and when I was back home my mom she looked at me she knew what was wrong and I'm so thankful for what she did because she knew I was going to hate her for it, but she knew that it was like my only chance. She took me to like a psychiatrist, a friend of hers, a friend of a friend basically. She was like, we need to figure this out. And I remember I hated her so much for it. And I feel so bad for that now. Because that was such a hard time, but I don't know if I would be here if she wouldn't have taken that step. And so that means a lot. Um, I feel like this is so out of order, but before I left Berlin, I was living in Berlin between New York and coming back to my hometown. I lived with my friend's parents, the apartment where we stayed in in Berlin, and my friend's mom, who sadly passed away later that year, she was like a psychiatrist, a therapist basically. She was the first one who was like, maybe you need to look into that and I know that you can make it out. She basically just looked at me and she was like, I know you're going through something and I know you can make it out. And I then went, I remember saying like, I had just hit like 10 or 20,000 followers, something like that. And I remember just being like, I'm gonna take a break here. But the truth was, I was going to be an impatient in an eating disorder unit and like a depression unit in a clinic. And I was there and there were no phones allowed, nothing. Only like a landline. My best friend called every now and then, sent me tea. We weren't allowed like to have anything. And that time was so harsh, but just to like round up the thought, I came back and then my friend from Berlin, she like called me and she was like, are you at home? Are you doing well? I was like, well, I don't know. Like, what do you have to tell me? She goes, um, my mom, she had cancer and then she catched COVID and she like passed away during the time that I was in the clinic and it just broke me. But I remember being at her funeral and I cried so much. And I also wanted to dare to be there for my friend and I was like I cannot cry all the time because like her mom probably meant so much more to her but she also meant so much to me and I feel like I'm kind of
kind of sad that I never got to tell her how thankful I am for what she did for me. Yeah, I just hope she's up there somewhere hearing what I'm saying and knows how much I love and miss her. <laughs> but yeah, the next chapter of my story was the eating disorder, depression kind of psychic clinic. Psychiatric clinic. I'm sorry, I don't know all of these words. And usually when I don't know words, I like Google them, but I'm not in the mood while telling this. So if there's anything wrong grammatically with like my grammar or my spelling or just the way that I say something, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I hope you can forgive me for that. It's just not important to me right now. I guess the next chapter of this story starts with me being an impatient. Also, all of these bits are like filmed half an hour apart from each other. I just need some time while telling this story. Um, yeah. So I was an impatient and I remember first day I went to my therapist there and she was like, there was this quiz you had to take and like scored different things and like different, I don't even know. But basically I went in and she's like, I've never met someone who was as, who scored as high as you did on that depression test. I was like, oh, well, glad to hear that, I guess. Um, yeah, that time was, I, That clinic was like in the woods, nothing around it basically, covered in snow. There was so much snow everywhere, it was beautiful. Um, no phones, as said, no internet, nothing. And also I think I have to say that this was a clinic that was specialized in addiction. And in English it doesn't even make that sense with like anorexia and bulimia, but in Germany anorexia at least is called uh, Magasucht, which means <sighs> the addiction to being thin. And I just realized there that it was a like their their whole thought process was that this is an addiction and you have to treat it like an addiction. The addiction always comes from something else. And so yeah, I just figured that I should add this because even though after I was like back home, nothing changed for a while. In the end it really helped me they they helped me a lot actually so yeah i was there i remember first day pasta for lunch i like cried two hours i was like i cannot eat that i i absolutely cannot and their idea was you you like had to sit down and just eat it and everyone had like a buddy it was like a buddy kind of system and my buddy she was like she was so amazing it was this girl she um also was in the eating disorder unit but like she had a binge eating problem or like i don't want to say problem but she suffered from binge eating basically she was like i cannot understand you because i would just eat all of that right now but i can understand your struggles with food and i felt like that was <sighs> she helped me so much during that time she's amazing honestly so yeah i made it through that also made it through rounds and rounds of depression therapy and everything um one thing that might be important here is that i still struggled with like all of those insane nightmares and also all of the um, basically insomnia nights so i couldn't sleep wouldn't sleep didn't want to sleep um, because at that point I always like dreamt the same thing. I always dreamt the like abuse kind of situation I always dreamt that up to one point. That's when I woke up and I for a long time thought that I would need to Understand what happened beyond that point because it's like a memory that I don't have anymore to make it stop and so I went through a Trauma therapy where they basically put you back in the situation and they make you go through it once more and like the entire idea is that that memory might come back. It didn't. 
it didn't bring me any closure back then, but it brings me closure now. Now I know I don't have to know what happened. I don't really care. It's in the past. Yeah, but that was that. And then afterwards I went home. I feel like one thing that I realized during my time in the clinic is that eating disorder depression, that these are real illnesses. And they also put me on antidepressants here. And then one more thing, they also like obviously had like a physical health check kind of thing. And that doctor basically told me that I'm probably never gonna have kids. And that was weird for me. Her whole thought process was that I haven't had a period in years at that point. I actually didn't have a period up until last summer. It's insane. I pretty much got my period back and got pregnant straight away, which is so rare. Um, and she said that like people who don't have their periods for so long are very likely to never be able to have children. And back then, that was a weird thing for me to hear because I never imagined my life with kids. If I'm being honest, up to like 22, I could have never imagined having kids. Or like maybe someday, but I was never someone who's like, I have to have kids. And I feel like knowing that I might not be able really took a turn on me. Yeah. I'm just so grateful that I got to experience this. It's the best thing, honestly, for me. It's the best thing. But yeah. Afterwards, I went back home. And things just didn't get better, honestly. And I think a big part of that is that while I was in the clinic, I didn't want it to recover because I thought I couldn't. I truly thought I couldn't. I thought the world was going to end. I was so afraid of what was going to happen if I would eat a bread, if I would just like let it go. Because I thought that not eating just helped me together for something. I, I don't even know for like some great reason. And so I... <clears throat> I like listened to them talk and I was like, yeah, okay, I want to recover, but I didn't. And I think that's why I don't, like, I didn't recover at that point. I went back home, started to make three YouTube videos a week. And like outside of doing that, I just, all I did was not eat. If I had to eat with people, I would have throw up. Um, or like drank a lot of alcohol with it to just make it feel okay for me. I think this is also a reason why I don't want to drink alcohol anymore. Like I sometimes do a little bit. I just don't want to get drunk anymore. I haven't had a drink in like over a year because of the baby, but I would drink a glass of wine, but I just don't want to get drunk drunk anymore. I just, it isn't for me. At that time back home, I, this was also the time where I met my ex-boyfriend, whom some of you know because he was on the channel. Every now and then I deleted a bunch of videos or privated them because in that relationship I never felt like me. At that time, I had a big struggle of basically always feeling like I'm not here, just feeling so disconnected with myself. and. I feel like I had a moment where I kind of woke up and I just had to leave that apartment. I had to leave that relationship. It was just all, I couldn't do it, honestly. It felt like I wasn't me. And in that moment, like the entire pain of not knowing who I am and like not feeling who, feeling like myself was just too painful to stay in that relationship and like keep living that life. But yeah, when I was back home from the clinic for like half a year, my dad offered me a job. So my dad basically works in like, I don't know how to say it. He works for a, it's not a company, it's like a nonprofit organization. And they have like a bunch of orphanages basically. 
and he like works there with different people and he just got me a job there and in the beginning I didn't want it to go but it was so amazing just like being there with these kids and just it helped me a lot and also made me realize that this is something that I might want to do with my life because I was still on the lookout after quitting the movie industry yeah and so I worked worked there for like half an hour until for like half a year wow until the winter of 2021 going into 2022 yeah that winter and then my birthday came around my 23rd birthday January 2022 and a few days before I said I don't want to do this anymore I was like this is it I'm just gonna stop right here I'm gonna go off all of my meds and I am gonna recover I want it I cannot take it anymore I looked at my life and was like I have nothing I don't feel like happy I don't feel anything at all anymore and I need to change and so I went off of my medicine and that was truly insane because if you're on so much medicine as I was you don't feel anything anymore nothing good nothing bad and I quit cold turkey people don't tell you to do this and probably it's not the best but for me it worked and I cannot believe I'm saying this right now because it seems too good to be true but the day that I said that I since then have never thrown up like it's been two years almost haven't thrown up once but I still have anorexic thoughts and I didn't like fully recover in like a day but just that and I'm like holding on to that so hard and I'm so proud of myself for it so I was a little triggered in the beginning of my pregnancy when I like threw up because I was feeling sick so much right behind you like right behind the camera there's this wonderful castle and I can appreciate the beauty of life so much it's so cliche because I couldn't for so long I guess I never went out during that time like even when I was like doing the three videos a week after I came out of the inpatient unit I never met friends I maybe like once a week went out but I was so afraid to meet a friend because I was like what if I have to eat something and that is so messed up and I know that now and I lost so many friends during that time and I because of like my struggles and all of this happening right when school ended I don't really have anyone left who I went to school with and sometimes that hurts so much because I see like these people hanging out and nothing ever happened but I'm just so scared to reach out because I feel like I was such a weird person for the last year of school half, half a year of school because I was just I was not doing well but I miss these people so much sometimes I still have my best friend and she's truly the best but I had so many close friends in school and I don't even know what they're doing and sometimes that's just so painful and I feel like because that happened in school not in like a school context it was a movie kind of context but I still stayed in the movie industry which is so fucked up looking back at it but because it happened while I was still in school I kind of like didn't want to stay in contact with anyone from that time and I know now that that was wrong because like these people didn't have anything to do with it and I it wasn't about forgetting who I was it was just about getting this sorted out and it's just so painful sometimes that I could still be friends with all of these people and I just hope that we can reconnect one day I just truly hope it so I don't even know where I was with telling this story yeah I started to recover and I truthfully started to like went went with it go with it and I started to eat more and I did gain weight I also gained weight in like the first part of like me being an impatient and it doesn't even fucking matter because I still feel I feel weird in my body I ever since then feel felt like weird in my body I think I don't I do have body dysmorphia and I know that 
so I just don't have any idea of what I actually look like. And I go a lot with how I feel in something, but I'm insecure. Sometimes I put myself out on like the internet and sometimes people comment on my body and sometimes it's nice, sometimes it isn't. It messes with me. Yeah. I still want to keep doing it though, because I love it. I love sharing with you my life. And it feels like you are my friends because as said I truly don't have like a lot of people left in my circle. I haven't met anyone here because I'm just so it's so hard for me to open up because I think also because of what happened probably. It's weird because I look back and I was such an extrovert as a kid. I always found friends everywhere. And now I just can't. Because what happened truly like broke my self-esteem, I think. My camera's running out of battery. I hope that we can like finish filming this without the camera just dying. It was full, but I think it's too cold here. Yeah, I want to keep telling the story though. So yeah, I started to recover. I recovered for good and I actually got pregnant. And that is like the full circle right here. And if you're watching this, I know it is so hard. I know recovery is like the hardest thing and I know you think you can't do it. But let me tell you, you can. And whatever you think you're losing, you're just winning back your life. And if you're in this video and this is the first video you see of me, let me be your example. And even if it's not, just look at me. I now have a life that is more amazing than what I could have ever imagined. And it's all because I recovered. And you are stronger than you think. You can do it. And I'm here and I'm rooting for you. And you can always reach out if you need anything. I'm, I'm here and I will always be here. I think I'm just gonna end the video right here. I just think I need some time to think this through. So yeah, thank you for watching. It means a lot. It means a lot that you're here. Because in the end, I didn't lose myself. And I am still here. I kind of survived this all. I am here, you are here means a lot that you're listening to me. I hope you have a beautiful day. <laughs> Go out, enjoy the sunshine, take yourself some time to focus on you and your mental health today. <sighs> and I just, I will catch you in the next one.